Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Clipping album, Splendor and Misery. Clipping is an experimental hip-hop trio, been following them for a while now, given the group a couple of positive reviews uh, from what they have released thus far, and this new album of theirs, highly anticipated for me, uh, especially since their last record, in my opinion, was so great, uh, their sub-pop record's debut. It was an album loaded with these technical, fast, wordy, and grimy rap verses backed up with these sample dense instrumentals. And not like sampling uh, chunks of music samples, like Clipping was incorporating sounds of ball bearings and static and distortion, and even alarm clocks to build the music of this record. Now, at least from my perspective as a music band, it seemed like the trio's future was hanging in the balance as frontman Davi Diggs had landed a major role in the Broadway smash, Hamilton. So I was thinking, would he go back to clipping? Would he continue to pursue a career in theater? But it turns out he did go back with clipping not too long after coming back from Hamilton. Uh, they put out the very rough, wild, dirty, and lo-fi Wriggle EP. Clipping really being as direct and to the point as possible as they could on a lot of these tracks, which I liked them, but it did feel in a way a little beneath them because clipping, couldn't they have gotten a little more conceptual with this thing, ambitious? But now that I hear Splendor in Misery, I think what they did on Wriggle makes total sense because this is kind of a, the flip side in a way. This album is not really catchy uh, at all in some respects, and it is hugely conceptual. Really a story album in a lot of respects uh, about a space traveler, which I was not expecting at all, but really I didn't know what to expect from this record, uh, especially when I heard the first single from it, Baby Don't Sleep, uh, which has this very skeletal, abstract instrumental which reminds me of their debut mixtape, which I liked quite a bit, but this track seemed even harder to digest. Plus, the track list to this thing was loaded with all these one-minute detours and interludes. On the surface, they might look like filler, but the truth is every single one of them plays fluidly into the very cohesive narrative of this record. It's almost like David's time in Hamilton inspired him to come back to clipping and do something that uh, was very theatrical, very cinematic. And it's a story that's told with incredible detail right from the opening track, The Breach, where Diggs is rapping incredibly fast to kind of set the story. And it seems like your typical opening clipping track, uh, there's a little drone or some noise in the background, it's really about the speed and intensity of David's verse, and then at the very end of it, you're met with all these shots of distortion and feedback, uh, it, but it kind of sounds like there's a bit of a sci-fi twist to the sounds this time around, and unfortunately he does not uh, uh, end his verse with, it's clipping, bitch, probably because it doesn't play into the narrative of this story. Now on the song All Black, we have David rapping again, but this time over a very sporadic uh, kind of droney instrumental. Uh, sounds like Jonathan Snipes and William Hudson are really in movie soundtrack mode on this track. And at this point in the album, it is told to us that the spaceship uh, that the story is set on is being commandeered by uh, our protagonist who is referred to as Cargo 2 Three, three, one. And this story is kind of about his travels on the ship, uh, the fact that he experiences, I guess what you could call, space madness. On this particular cut on the record, he finds solace in rapping to himself. He asks the computer, he asks the ship if it has any beats for him to rap on, so instead he's kind of rapping against uh, the weird uh, sci-fi-esque sounds of the ship itself, which is, I guess, why the instrumentals sound so odd. And this track is also kind of a mission statement. It's a bit of a life-affirming moment. Cargo 2331 uh, says that he's not going to succumb to the all-black everything, and I kind of get the sense in the story that he's uh, uh, being chased, being searched for. And at the end of the track, the ship seems to put out this message uh, where it's telling people not to come search for them, not to come find them. Cargo 2331 is not a threat. This is love don't fuck with it. Uh, so the ship might be in love with him, he might be in love with the ship. Then we're hit with an interlude where I imagine it's kind of Cargo 2331 rapping uh, over this static and distortion. It kind of sounds like a, a lost transmission. And this happens at a couple points on the record. Our protagonist's exploits on the ship continue on the song Wake Up, where he's kind of rapping about going into hypersleep. It's pretty crazy because the, the refrains are actually pretty frightening as David is rapping, there'll be no here when you wake up. There'll be no here no when you wake up. There'll be no here when you wake up. 
I also like the very fast pace of the beat and how the kick drums are just And then all of a sudden things take a serious change of pace musically. We're hit with the song Long Way Away, which sounds like a, a piece of old gospel, a spiritual, and this is performed by a very somber choral group with no real backing instrumentation of any kind. And while it sounds nice, at the time when I heard it, I'm like, wow, does this, does this really fit in to what is going on with the album so far? It's kind of confusing because sonically it sounds so much different than anything else. But up until this point, the album has been so unorthodox that sure, why not throw a a choral group piece in there, right? But as the album continues on, there sort of seems to be this very clear juxtaposition of old and new. Music that sounds like it had been written or recorded hundreds of years ago, and then music that sounds like it's coming from at least a hundred years in the future. And these two elements come together beautifully on the song True Believer, uh, where we have an interpolation of this slave spiritual into the chorus, I know when I'm leaving, I'm going home, which actually fit pretty snugly and nicely in between David's verses on the track the song ends with like this robot box voice singing at the very finish, which is pretty eerie, but again, fits into the track despite the anachronistic clash of sounds. And it's on this track that a few things become clear, that there are religious parallels between slave spirituals and David's lyrics, but also his reference directly to slave ships makes it apparent that our protagonist here is a victim of what I guess is a futuristic intergalactic slave trade. He's literally a slave in the space age. He's cargo. He's on a cargo slave ship in space. The front cover is literally depicting that as from the bottom half, he is in torn pants and shackles, but from his legs up, he's in an astronaut suit. Which again, I think plays into uh, the fact that David had spent so much time in Hamilton because, I mean, the period of time in which he was playing his character. Slavery? Pretty popular. Now the song Air Em Out is the album's lone banger. Uh, it's the song that I think worked best as a single for this project, though still, uh, I think it makes more sense within the context of the album than it makes outside of the context of the album. Because while it is loaded with some clever, braggadocious lines, uh, a lot of them reference space and space travel, sci-fi shit. Also one line about uh, the protagonists haters or uh, his enemies having had to make the noose a little tighter. I also like how the ending of the track blossoms with these beautiful glossy eerie synthesizers. And the ending, the last several tracks of this record are pretty intense and add to the story quite a bit. We have the song Break the Glass where uh, Cargo 2331 pretty much goes crazy in a way loses communication with the ship so the intensity of the instrumental really ramps up, gets noisy, sirens going off, tons of texture, and this just a, a frightening refrain where he's rapping about having to break the glass in order to either uh, get attention, get out of the ship, or just feel something. And then from here we have a bit of an interlude on the song Story 5. Now you might notice that if you've listened to everything Clipping has done up until this point, we've only had two installments of the Story series so far. So with this album being set into the future, now in the Story series we are also going into the future, I guess. Uh, I have heard that we will understand better what this track's connection is to the other two story tracks once Story 3 and Story 4 are released. But in this particular cut, uh, we are hearing another track that sounds like a spiritual, that sounds like a folk song, it's delivered by a choral group, and it is about Grace, uh, a woman named Grace, who is going overseas, fighting battles. The story doesn't necessarily tie into the overall theme and concept of the record, but there are some parallels on this track, I think, uh, with uh, being out of your element, being away from home. I think we're basically supposed to relate Grace's struggles on this track to the struggles of the protagonist and just kind of use this track, again, as a folk song to just kind of help us make sense of the trials and tribulations uh, that our protagonist is going through. Now on the song Baby Don't Sleep, it sounds like we are getting the ship rapping again, or at least David is rapping from the standpoint of maybe the narrator that he was at the beginning of the record and uh, the track is basically about our protagonist's insane behavior on the ship as he just kind of falls further and 
ventured further into madness due to his isolation, talking about how he is most likely not going to survive the cold grips of space. And right after this is the closing track, it kind of sounds like we're leaving our protagonist in a better place as the instrumental is a little bit more triumphant and upbeat. But um, still, lyrically, it's pretty much we're leaving this guy stranded in space and maybe he'll make it, but probably not. And the track gets almost trippy and surreal toward the back end with all these effects and some of the lyrics that, uh, that David is rapping. It's kind of like uh, Clipping trying to make their own little finish to their 2001 A Space Odyssey. And that's really the record. It's an interesting album. And I know I really went into the concept of this thing, but I like the music on this record a lot too. I love the instrumentals, uh, not just because I think they're super catchy. I mean, that was a little underwhelming when I was first getting into the album because it was sort of confusing. But now that I understand the concept of the album so much more, the sound of the instrumentals makes sense and is way more captivating to me. Now, if there are some shortcomings of the album, they are as follows. For one, the moments when David is singing on this record aren't really that good. I wish he just kind of brought in uh, some of the singers he had on the other tracks, especially when he is singing on the closing song on this thing. Uh, to me, the singing that he gives on this record is just not really up to par with his rapping and feels a little awkward at points. And then there's the fact that, uh, aside from the song Air Him Out, but even that track still, uh, nothing can be pulled out of the context of this record and really sound good or make sense, you know? Uh, th there's not really anything that has single potential on this record, so I think that's going to make it difficult for it to find an audience, uh, at least, you know, for your average person. The more patient listener, the people who've been following Clipping up until this point, uh, I think will find a lot to love on this record. Uh, it just doesn't really kind of have that banger potential, that single potential that a lot of songs from their previous records did. So that can make it a, a little more difficult to swallow because you've got to listen to it as a holistic piece, but Clipping didn't really overstay their welcome with this thing because it is just 38 minutes. So if you want to hear a tight, well-written, detailed concept album in under 40 minutes, it's clipping has delivered it. Now that's really the extent of my complaints on this thing. Aside from that, there's a lot to love here. The lyrics, the story, the flow of the album, the combination of sounds and musical styles old and new, the fact that once again clipping has made a hip-hop record but stylistically it's just so far outside of even the fringes of what you would normally categorize hip-hop music to be. All the performances on this record are incredible, I would say, from the uh, choral groups to the rap verses. And finally, it's again, it's just worth praising that the trio has pulled together this really intriguing concept uh, within such a short amount of time. Because there have been a lot of great concept records as of late, but many of them have uh, been an hour, been an hour and 30 minutes. So clip in a way puts out really one of the most hard-hitting and direct concept albums to come out in a while. But all that being said, uh, I think this is a really great record. I mean, Clipping has done it again. You know, I don't really uh, love it as much as I do their last record, or maybe I can't even really love it in the same way I do their last record because they're entirely different animals. I can always come back to that album for a ton of different tracks that are incredibly catchy, stand well on their own, whereas with this record over here, really have to listen to the whole thing in one sitting. I don't want to keep going. I think I've said everything I need to say about this album. I'm feeling a strong 8 to a light 9 on this thing. Really impressed with it. I hope you guys are as well, and I hope I was able to shed some light onto what exactly is being said and uh, the idea of this album, or what I think the idea of this album is. And I hope I didn't spoil too much of it for you either, uh, because I know that maybe if you miss some of this stuff, going back and listening to it and looking for those elements, looking for those hints, looking for those parallels between the new, the old, slavery, future, past, all that stuff uh, could make the album more interesting, certainly. Uh, Tran. Zition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like. If you like, please subscribe and please don't cry if you disagree with my thoughts on this clipping album. Okay? Blah, 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 blah. Anthony Fantano. Clipping. Splendor and Misery. Forever.